Good morning, FlossTube. My name is Erica and I am here to talk to you about my cross stitching, a very special new bag, um, and hand quilting. Uh, this is FlossTube 31. If you are new, I hope you stay to check out and see what I have to gab about today. Um, I will typically talk, talk about life stuff in the beginning for a few minutes, so if you want to fast forward to the stitchy talk, there will be a timestamp below that you can skip over all of my random ranting and raving. Um, if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much. I have not responded to a single comment from last week. I'm so sorry, but I have read them. Um, and I'll answer a couple of the questions that I got here in just a moment. It is Sunday, November 17th, I think. Um, I mentioned last week that we have a special surprise for the kids today. And I don't want to say what it is yet because I don't know. I'll just wait until after we actually do it, but I'm really, really excited. It's going to be an overnight stay somewhere. Um, I've mentioned before how I am using the majority of my income. Well, I won't say the majority of what I make. Probably half of what I'm making off of Etsy has gone towards saving for our Disney vacation, and that is in February. <clears throat> I started saving for it maybe three months ago, and it's close to being paid off. Um, so when my husband came back last week, I had decided to do something special as a family because he's been gone for three months. And I booked this overnight stay that we're going to be doing. And the kids are going to freak out. Oh my, I'm gonna freak out. It's, oh my God, I'm so excited. It's gonna be so much fun. Uh, so I'll tell you guys about that next week. Uh, he, my husband, Travis, has been off from work all week. He went in on just on Friday. Um, he has been on his A game this week, you guys. Holy cannolis. He has been so helpful. He has gotten so much done around the house. He has been so good with the kids. I have gotten way more stuff done than usual because typically almost all of my free time goes to making project backs for the Etsy shop. But now that he's been home for a week um, and being really helpful, I have been able to stitch a lot more mostly downstairs because I'll hang out with the family still, um, but he's playing with them or interacting with them or whatever, and I can just sit there and cross stitch and kind of still be a part of things, but get some stitchy time in. So that's been really fun. Um, next week, I guess, is not Thanksgiving, the week after. I think we've decided to do homemade macaroni and cheese. Uh, I'm a vegetarian and gluten-free because I have celiacs. My kids are four and two. They're not gonna eat turkey and stuffing and all that stuff. My husband would eat it, but typically so much of it goes to waste because he's the only one that would eat it. I don't wanna do that anymore. And so he has gone on and on about his grandma's mac and cheese and growing up thinking it was like the best meal in the whole world and that was like his go-to comfort food. So I said, okay, let's get a recipe and we'll make that for Thanksgiving. Um, so he texted his dad a couple days ago asking if he had the recipe. This is his dad's mom. And he sent him back a picture of Kraft macaroni and cheese. <laughs> That's his dad's sense of humor. Like they go back and forth and just constantly snark on each other. So I'm pretty sure that's not actually what she cooked. Um, and I'm hoping he's getting the recipe from her. If not, I'm gonna text Travis's aunt today and say, hey, maybe she already has it. Um, Cause I thought that would be really fun. So we're gonna make that and we're gonna do jalapeno cornbread. Well, one will be jalapeno, one will be regular for the kids. Um, but I don't have anything else. Can you guys, if you have any ideas, please comment and let me know what else would go good with macaroni and cheese and cornbread, which I know is a very atypical holiday meal. But growing up in my family, we had lasagna. We would have cheese lasagna because I was a vegetarian. I mean, I've been a vegetarian since my early 20s. It's been like 15 years, oh my God. Um, and then my dad had celiac disease about the same time. He's probably been over a decade at this point. So I don't think it was gluten-free yet then, but it was definitely either manicotti or lasagna. It was so good. Um, trying to, oh my God, that's what I was gonna talk about. So I watched Outlander for the first time binge watched it. I have been, and I, I say this like I don't want to offend anybody. No one's going to get offended, I don't think. But I have not been watching floss tubes. I just got burned out on them. I was watching them like all night um, while I was stitching or working. So we we're talking like two or three hours a night and I just got way burned out on them. Um, and I go through phases. I'm sure in a couple weeks I'll be watching them obsessively again. I think it's just... Yeah, just go burn down on. There's no real reason. Um, God, that thing's not on there straight and it's bothering me. Oh, you can kind of see my hair cut a little bit better. A little bit. She did a really good job. You know, some people 
um, don't do long layers very well and it gets really choppy or something, but she did a really, really good job. I love this person that I found. Uh, okay, so I started watching Outlander. I actually, I first binge watched Schitt's Creek and that was hilarious. Not for everybody, I don't think anyone, like it's kind of a irreverent sense of humor, um, but I loved it. I thought it was so funny and so well done. And then after that, I got into Outlander and I, I think I just looked into Netflix one night and I saw it there. And I remember years ago hearing how insanely popular it was and everybody went bananas over it. And so I gave it a chance and I finished all four seasons in like a week. Oh my God, I was staying up till like 2.30 in the morning and then waking up at 7.30 with my kids. And I'm like, oh my, this is what having a newborn was like. I'm exhausted all the time. I'm having to deal with you guys. Like, no, uh, I really liked it, but I am going to say, do not watch it if you are triggered by violence towards women, okay? If you know what I'm saying, violent acts towards women or even violent acts towards men, men on men violent acts. Um, I am a little surprised that over all the years of hearing about how amazing this show is, not one time, literally not one single time did I hear anyone say, it is extremely graphic and extremely violent extremely I mean I'm sure there's worse things to, that you could watch like horror movies or maybe other shows um, but I don't watch stuff like that I've, I've said it before I watch like PG rated things like I most of my 20s I lived by myself and I would go to sleep watching Full House or Stay by the Bell on repeat because I didn't have cable and I had those DVDs I like feel-good shows I don't like to watch dramas I don't I like comedies like that's pretty much all I ever watch are comedies or things like Gilmore Girls you know where it's not a super comedy but it's not like really dramatic um so i have mixed emotions on outlander i think the show is amazing and i know it's based on a book series which i may or may not read at some point and see if it's better than the show i mean the show's really good don't get me wrong it just got so fantastical toward the end it's like i mean i don't want to give any spoilers for people that are still gonna watch it but it's just it got it's so out there like every possible if you see a character and you're like, wow, what is the worst possible thing that could happen to her at this point? It's going to happen every time. And so it, it just, it was emotionally exhausting to watch that for like four episodes a night. But it was very good. Um, I probably prefer Poldark just because it's a little bit, it's considerably less violent. Um, and the love story I think is better in Poldark. The love story in Outlander is a little bit borderline abusive. And the main character, Claire, I feel like is kind of a narcissist. Um, but I, I, I do like it. And so if you guys have recommendations for shows, like I need something new. I started watching last night, um, the 1900s house. I don't know how many of you guys will remember it. It was from early 2000s, I think. So I was in high school and I remember watching it with my mom. It was a series that PBS did where they took this family and they put them in a replica. I mean, down to the wiring of the house and the stove, everything, the wallpaper, 1900 house in England and watch them live for three months. Like how did they get used to things? How challenging was it? Um, how did they celebrate birthdays and holidays? And it's so good. Oh my gosh. I was obsessed with the Victorian era for so long. Maybe that shows what sparked it because that was about the same time I started getting really into it. Um, so I feel a really big Victorian kick coming on and I don't like high society Victorian stuff. I like low to low middle class Victorian life. So if you have anything, any shows like that, um, Lark Rise to Candleford is another show that I really, really liked. Might've been around the same time. I don't really remember. Might've been earlier. I, I think, I, I don't know if I mentioned last week, I was at Hobby Lobby and there was a woman in front of me getting a bunch of upholstery fabric cut and tassels and whatnot. And I heard her say something to the woman about a dress. And so I asked her, I said, what are you making? And she's like, oh, every year I make my daughter a replica Victorian gown for her Christmas photos. I was like, okay then, you must be very good seamstress. And she smiled kind of like, yeah, I am. But trying to be modest about it. Um, and apparently she's from Pennsylvania and they had a Charles Dickens era Santa Claus there every year that the kids could go visit. And so she started making these Victorian gowns. She's got two boys and a girl um, and she makes their outfits every year. And I was like, that's amazing. That is so cool. And there's actually a Victorian reenactment society here in the area. And they like wear their period garbs and go and have like teas and they march in the parades. And I was like, oh my God, I want to join that. I told my mom the other day, I was like, 
I, all of my interests and hobbies and pretty much my whole lifestyle, minus the drinking too much wine, is exactly that of like a 60 year old grandma. Like I love quilting and cross stitch and staying home and gardening and you know, all this stuff like 1950s life I'm very interested in. If I'm already a grandma at 35, what am I gonna be when I'm actually 60? I'm gonna be like next level grandma. I don't know what that's gonna be, but I, I can't wait. I'm so excited. Uh, okay, I think that's enough chit chat. We're just past 10 minutes. So if you can't tell, I'm in a really good mood. I'm so excited. I had the best week. It's been so relaxing. I got to watch all the Outlander. Now we have the cool family mini staycation happening tonight. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna get right into things. So the first whip, I don't have any finishes. I do have a fully finished idea for my Prairie Schooler tree farm, but I didn't get to do it yet. Priorities, people. Uh, I'm not even gonna really move this. This is Little House Nina Works Homestead Holidays. The barn is that one. And then, well, you can't see the other ones. It's a series of nine and I'm doing them as ornaments for my tree, which will eventually go right here. And I'm hoping the wall quilt that I'm working on now will go right there. I um, don't think I worked on these too, too much. Oh, I did, I forgot. I had, so I was waiting on an order from Threads Entwined and it came in. And so I was able to do these two stars and finish the house. So this one's fully finished except for this little bit of white. That's all I gotta do. And then this one, I still need to rip out. There's one extra space here um, and move this over some but I got all the white on the house done. And the trees I think might be done. The one that's got just all these branches. Yeah, there's gonna be two birds on the top here. And then there's like a snowman right here. And then this one's pretty much done. I'm not gonna get all nine done. And I don't know if I would wanna do all nine. There's a couple that I'm, eh, you know, don't love. Not bad, but I don't know if I would stitch them. So what is it, middle of November? My goal would probably be to have five done and on the tree by mid-December. You guys know that the finishing part is what's going to take me like a month. Um, ornaments. We'll go into these. So these are the ones that I'm making as gifts for my husband's family. The Prairie Schooler Snowy Nights. They're really cute. I want to say this is a kind of a new release. I think I got this off of Fat Quarter Shop when I was looking at their What's New section. And so I have three that I am working on. This one is fully finished except for the border. This needs to repeat, you know, over here, here, and here. Just a little back stitching. This one is done except for this window and the white. Yeah, I haven't stitched any of the white. So like the roof, the in between, all that needs to be stitched still. This one I already know I'm gonna send. I hope nobody, I don't think anybody's family watches it. And I, I know I shake the camera when I have my elbows on the table, so I'm trying to stop. Um, this one I'm gonna send to my gram, my husband's grandma, so my kid's great-grandma, Marianne. She is freaking hilarious. She's like 80 and super feisty. And she, I think, appreciates like the farm life, and she grew up in a you know small rural area. So I, I thought she'd like that one. This one I might go um, send to my husband's aunt, Aunt Sue. And then this one is for my husband's stepmom. It is the, can't really see what it is, the three cardinal one, because she really likes cardinals. So I started that one this week and I just have one bird almost done and part of the top. So these are going really fast. I mean, they're pretty small. So I'm hoping to get five of maybe six. And I, and whatever, you guys don't need to know exactly how many. <laughs> it's five or six. Can't remember how many people I'm trying to send them to. Okay, so I have, I guess, just no, I have three more whips and two new starts. And they're awesome new starts. So this is Jack Frost Tree Farm. Ooh, I got a lot of work on this one done, too. <clears throat> oh, my God. Oh, my God. A couple months ago, I talked about wagon oil. This was my first ever fancy floss that I used. And it was not fancy at all. It was not variegated. It was just plain old, like 433, I think it's the DMC equivalent. So the top of this border is done in wagon wheel. I mean, it's, it literally had no variegation because I remember being on here being like, I got this fancy floss thinking, I mean, obviously they're not all variegated, but the majority of them I think are. That's kind of the point of them in my opinion. If it's not variegated, I'm just gonna use DMC. So I was pretty disappointed. 
Well, I ran out and I had to order more and guess what? It's the most variegated dang floss I've ever seen in my entire life. So it's almost like totally different colors. So anyways, I'll show you the whole thing first. I did the borders. Um, I did this tree this week. I still need to finish the top, but I just can't. I just get bored and I just move on. I finished, or I haven't finished, but I, mean, I had used the wagon wheel to do the tree step or trunks. Um, I need to do a little tiny bit right here and then finish this top part and this one's done. But like for the wagon wheel, let me, so this it's a light, this all up here is the original wagon wheel. And then this down here is the new stuff. I mean, it's a totally different shade. Total, total, it's much, much darker. And the whole thing is like that. Like there's a teeny tiny bit that's like the same color as the original one I used. I mean, it doesn't bother me enough that I'm not gonna keep using it. I have to. I mean, I guess I could switch to the DMC equivalent, but now from far away, you can't hardly even tell. And it's supposed to be variegated anyways. It's just, goodness. You would think that like they would keep one set of floss from their first batch and then when they go to make their second one match it to it and say like oh wow these are two totally different colors Maybe it's just me. i think i'm just gonna always have a hatred for wagon wheel okay so my two new starts i told you guys i got so much done this week and i haven't even gotten to the freaking quilt in the new project bag i have had this pattern for a little while i think i got it with my birthday money in october um, prairie schooler harvest time and I really like all of them but this one was definitely my favorite and I had seen someone stitch it on Instagram and it looked amazing so pretty and then I started stitching it and it looks like butt it just looks ugly to me like I think I just started on like the wrong side because um, it's just I don't know it's a blob of browns and whatever. I mean, I'm going to keep going with it, obviously. I just, I lost steam after, I was so excited to start this one. This was my new start after the prairie school, or the Christmas tree farm. And I just don't love it. But I know I will. It's so pretty. I just, I don't, I don't love it right now. But I'll keep going with it. I think once I, once I add like the trees, like that's what really is all the pretty fall colors. So I'm trying to get these roofs done so then I can go up here and start doing trees around. And it's even got like this teeny tiny cemetery. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Okay, and my last new start and haul. So when I ordered from Threads and Twined, I ordered two patterns as well because it was on sale. It was like 25% off. So here's the other pattern I'll just go ahead and show. Lantern Lane, is it Lantern Lane? Yes, Lantern Lane by Little House Nina Works. This has been around for a little while. Uh, I mean, the date right here says 2014. And I have heard many people say it takes a lot longer than you would expect. I don't know if it has the, um, let me just take this out. It's big. And there's just the house alone, there's a significant amount of, here you guys can look at this while I look for this. So the stitch count's 190, oh, I'm sorry, 199 by 125. So that's a pretty big chart. Um, just the house itself, I remember looking at that because that's what everyone said. Ugh, took forever, or felt like it took forever at least. It's such a pretty pattern though, so I don't, I don't mind doing a big pattern, it's pretty. It's about 70 stitches across. Just the house by 70 tall. So that's a lot of stitches. Um, and I, I went ahead and I got the, I think it's Lancaster Wren for the house. I probably already, I need, I can't, I still don't feel confident counting on 28 count. So I would not start here. I would need to start like up here. So I need to make sure I have whatever those greens are. Pea pod. Oh, I think I have that too. So I, I don't know. I, I don't want to start anything new. I want to wrap up some other things. I still really want to get my <coughs> Christmas Village done. My Little House Nina Works um, Christmas Village. And I'm trying to think if there's any other Christmas time. Well, my other new starts a Christmas one. 
So that's, I've been, and all the ornaments I'm doing, like I'm clearly in the Jack Cross Tree Farm. I want those all done for Christmas. And I'm gonna need to start watching YouTube videos on how to uh, frame stuff yourself because that's the only way that I'll be able to afford to frame all this. <clears throat> um, oh no. Okay, there it is. My stuff's getting all mixed up because I need to put it in project bag still. So this is my new start. This is thanks to Christine at Stitch All The Things because she is stitching this as well. And this is Christmas Sentiments by Stony Creek. It is beautiful. It is stunning. And I feel like it has a Victorian vibe to it because there's gold beads in the middle of all these red. Um, and then there's star beads up on the top of the tree. It is absolutely beautiful. And so I went to the local Ruth Stitchery. Oh my God, I got to go there by myself this week. I had a doctor's appointment and it's on the same side of town as Ruth Stitchery and Hobby Lobby and I needed vinyl or something. And my husband was at home so he watched the kids and I got to go shopping by myself and it was so quiet and it was so peaceful. You guys that don't have kids or if you already have kids that are school aged or out of the house, I hope you appreciate the luxury of being able to just get into a car by yourself, drive anywhere you want and not hear screaming or fighting or Cheeto throwing or anything like, oh my God, it was so nice. It was so nice. <laughs> so I went there to try to kit this up and they only had the green thread and the red beads. They did not have this brown that I needed for like the basket and the border or the red. So that should be here Monday. I ordered that from one, two, three stitch. And I got a pretty good start on it already. Oh my gosh, I'm getting everything all mixed up. This is, it's a very quick stitch. Um, oh, and I will say, it said you only, it said you needed two skeins of the dark green that's inside, because this tree is actually two different, two different variegated greens. And it said you needed two skeins of monkey grass, which is the inside dark green, and then only one skein of the outside light green. No, sir. You're going to need two of that one. I am definitely going to run out. So here, ooh, ooh, there's my first tree. So the tree is all done, except for I have just a square here block that I need to do, but I didn't want to cut off a whole new length of thread. I'm going to wait until I start working on the other tree. Um, and then I just need the F here. It's going to say faith, hope, and then whatever else, love, joy, peace. Oh my gosh, it's going to look so pretty when it's done. That red thread is unbelievable. It's thread works, and I want to say it was like a 20 yard um, thing of it. The week's dye works only five yards, which might explain why I'm running out. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. And the snowflakes, I cannot wait. So I'm kind of going back and forth. I might not do, I don't know how I feel about these circles underneath. Like I'm kind of tempted to just have the border be like that at the bottom. And even if I do the circles, there's this white zigzag. I don't think I'm going to do that. I just feel like it doesn't add anything to the pattern and you can't even really see it. So we'll see. But there's, there's my start. Almost got the tree done. I don't want to say halfway done because there's that red floral thing in the middle, but I can't start that because I don't have the red or the brown, but I will tomorrow. <clears throat> Okay, so that is all my stitchy stuff. I'm very accomplished for the week. I've kind of been in a workout rut. I feel like maybe I've been stitching more because I haven't been working out in the mornings. But what I have been doing more is going on walks. So like the kids and I went on long walks twice this week, like four to five miles each time. And we'll hit up a bunch of different playgrounds. So they're not in the stroller the whole time they would go insane. But they're in there for maybe 15, 20 minutes and we stop and play for 20, 30 minutes. And then we walk to another one to stop and play. And I'll bring a picnic lunch and we're out there for like three or four hours. <gasps> we saw a snake yesterday. I love seeing snakes. So cute. I mean, I don't want to say cute. It was really pretty. I think it's a very beautiful snake. Um, so that's just been my workout. And like, I think it's ever since I got back from Florida with the kids in September and then the stomach flu and then the croup and then this and then that. And, you know, during the summer I was working out um, more, but I also had the garden and the garden is a heck of a workout, especially when it's just uh, the size and scale of the, of the one that we had. I did already go ahead and order my seeds for next year. I couldn't wait. I kept telling myself I was gonna wait until closer to the time because I know I'm gonna change my mind on some things and add more, but I couldn't wait. 
and I'm so excited. I got lots of cool, cool seeds and beans and stuff to try. Um, so I guess I'll do this and then I'll do the project bag and I have a giveaway at the end. So this is a panel from, I'm gonna have to stand up to show this, from Hobby Lobby that all you have to do is make the quilt sandwich and quilt it and bind it. So that's what I was working on last night and I'm hand quilting it because when I quilt some on the machine, it looks awful. It looks like a first grader did it. Um, so I don't want to keep ruining my quilts with that. Okay, let me move my chair for a second. So there's the whole panel. And it's got, you know, the batting. And I wish I'd used a higher loft batting so it was puffier. There's the back. It's just like Christmas presents. And so the quilting, I've quilted his hat and all around this, the red part of Santa. Let me see if you can. Oh my gosh, I'm trying not to shake everything so much. You can see all right here. And it's a pretty big stitch. It's red thread. I would say they're maybe quarter inch um, stitches because it's gonna be on the wall and no one's even gonna see it. And like I said, I really wish it, I would have used higher loft batting or just double the amount of batting that, that I had, just done like two layers of it, because you can't, um, you can't see it at all. I mean, you can see the stitching. Oh my gosh, it's so big. So I'm gonna probably still, I don't know. I thought about quilting around this, this orange or gold border, but I started it last night and you can't even see it. Like I quilted the whole bottom along here and you cannot see a single bit of it. So I'm like, why am I doing it if you can't see it? So I might not quilt anymore. I might just go ahead and, um, what is, I can't think of the word, trim it, square it up and bind it. <laughs> put, a, put a sleeve on the back and then I don't think it's gonna fit there. If I move those things, my reproduction sampler's back. Yay, it's framed right there. I have that pattern in my Etsy shop. Um, anyways, okay, you're done, got it. <laughs> I get so easily frustrated. It's just so big. I did this. So yeah, I don't, if I move those things, it might, but I might move this whole thing. Cause like I said last week, I really want to put my fabric on there so I can put it over there next to my sewing machine. Cause I, when I started the Etsy shop, I had no idea it was going to become like my entire life. And so everything's kind of just been pieced together in the moment. Like I never planned to have, you know, 50 yards of fabric over here. I never planned to have 15 different colors of thread that I use for the bags that I still need to get one of those like peg things to hang them up near the sewing machine. Like I just, I never planned it to be what it is right now. And I need to take a step back. And I mean, I don't want to say thankfully because I like the orders and I like saving money, but I haven't had as many orders in the last couple days. So as of Monday, I'll pretty much be caught up. Um, and I might take like a night to really organize. I started last night and I got some good progress made, but okay. So I want to show, I know I keep messing with my hair. It's just for some reason it's really bothering me today. I want to show you guys the new project bag I made. And I'm totally freaking out because it's so cute and it's so amazing. And I can't remember where I got the idea from, um, but I was like, you know what? I can do that. And I tried it out and I did. It's so cute. So my very first confetti bag. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. It's super blingy. And of course the glare is going to make it hard to see. But it's got Christmas colored confetti in there. And obviously you can, you know, open it up and there's, it's sandwiched right there. Look at that, oh my God, it's so cute. Oh, I love all things sparkly and Christmas and blingy and I died. Okay, so if you order one, it's probably gonna be a little bit less confetti because this is like a lot. I think I went a little overboard. I mean, you're still gonna have a good amount, but this, this might be just a little bit much. But, and even the Santa fabric is sparkly. He's got little sparkles, like the snowflakes are glittery and then a little bit of sparkle on his hat. Look at that. So by the time this video is live, this will be in my shop as well. If you wanna check it out, there's a link below. It is gonna be a little bit higher price than my regular bags because it's more materials and it takes a little bit longer um, to make this and the confetti gets everywhere, but it's totally worth it. And if this does well, then I will do other bags um, with confetti. Isn't that cute? 
Oh, oh my god, I could just do this all day. I'll stop. You guys are like, you're making me dizzy. Stop doing that. But I was just so proud of myself. And I have another idea for a new project bag. Um, but like I said, I just always feel like I need to be working on orders. Um, oh my gosh, it's so cute. It's so sparkly. I'm just, I'm telling you, I'm just a sucker for anything glittery. I have to have it. Okay, so last but not least, I have a little giveaway. As I said, I was going through my sewing stuff last night and trying to organize a little bit. I've got a ton of stuff to donate, like tons of good sized fabric cuts for bags that like I never actually ended up making or I'm no longer making. Um, some like soft and stable that I bought for some reason I'm never gonna use and all sorts of stuff. But we have a used craft store here called Who Gives Us Crap? And I'm gonna take it there this week. And this was in the donate pile and I was like, wait a second, somebody on the floss tubes might enjoy it. Oh, and before I forget too, one of the comments from last week, somebody asked me, whatever happened to that two colored quilt you were working on? So I was doing a sew along with Fat Quarter Shop for a little while and it was Lori Holt's two color quilt. My colors were red and green, so it was a Christmas quilt. It was, I think, nine blocks and then 16 pinwheels in between each block. I have all the blocks done, I think, and then the pinwheels were the next step. So while my mom was here last month, I um, asked her, not her, not last week, I think they were, God, was it just last week they were here? But she came up for like three weeks, a couple weeks after Travis left. Um, so this was like September? Yeah, it was September, because it was when we, anyways. I asked her, I said, hey, can you work on the pinwheels for me? If you want something to do, because she is the huge quilter, she loves to quilt, she loves to work on things. So she attempted to, and I don't know if there were the seam issue was on her machine, or if there was a cut issue, but she made a couple of them and they did not turn out. And so now I don't even know if I have enough fabric left. I could probably go and buy some more. Most of it was from Joann's and Ruth's Stitchery here in town. Um, but I don't even know if I wanna do the pinwheels. Like it's a lot of work and I might just do regular sashing, like plain sashing in between each one. I don't know. So that's the status of the two color quilt is that it is mostly done, um, but I haven't really decided on how I want to proceed with it at this point. Okay, so the giveaway is going to be this super cute quilt kit. It is a wall quilt and it comes with everything you need. Yeah, the top, the backing and the binding. So all you really need are interfacing or not interfacing, um, batting. So there's the quilt top. It's not, it's, you don't have to piece anything. You just literally just quilt it. There's the back and then there's the sashing fabric. When my mom was here, we got like one of each of these. They were on clearance um, at Joann's for five bucks, but I know I'm not gonna make it. I just, I did keep, there's a flamingo one and a pineapple one that I kept, um, but I'm just, realistically not going to get to all of them so if you would like this super cute cherry wall hanging it finishes at i think 36 oh 17 and a half by 24 and a half so cute especially for summer um just comment below and say i would like the wall quilt say something about wall quilt and that's what i will search for when i search for a winner wall quilt I was also going through, I have so many quilt tops um, that need quilting and I just lost steam on them. And I have a really, really pretty one. It's, I think the design was called Amberly. It was a free design by Moda, I wanna say. Or wait, no, maybe that was the fabric that I used, was Amberly. And I, it might have been, it might have been that. That star, I think it might have been the same pattern. It was. And I'm looking at it, but it's a full size, the queen size, 72 by 72 inch quilt. And it would be so pretty for spring. It's like shabby chic kind of vibes to it. Um, and I was talking to my mom last night before I started hand quilting this and getting like some last second pointers. And I said, you know, I'm not going to hand quilt a 72 inch square quilt. That would take me, it takes her about six months to finish hand quilting something in between, you know, she's working on another project. So I think she, if she works on it one or two hours a night, it takes her about six months. I'm not gonna do that. But I also don't wanna have to pay to get it quilted because that would be pretty pricey for a quilt that size. And so she's like, well, why don't you do the knots, like tie knots? I, and I remember when I was a kid seeing a quilt at her house that did that, where you just get like yarn and you tie little knots all over it. 
And I was like, you know what? That could actually kind of work because it's, like I said, it's got this shabby chic vibe to the fabric. So I was like, I might try that. I could tie knots, that wouldn't take very long. And then I don't have to spend like 150 bucks to have a long arm quilter quilted. So I might do that. I don't know if it'd be anytime soon, but I would like to do it before um, spring so that I could use it on my bed in the spring because it's so pretty. So I guess that's all I have for you today. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Gotta ask for show recommendations because I need, and if they, have, they have to be on Netflix or Amazon Prime. That's all I have to watch. Any sort of period shows, Victorian era shows. Um, I did the giveaway, did all my whips. I should probably get going because I need to finish up um, a couple bags and drop them off at the post office, even though it's Sunday, just because we're going to not be home till later in the day tomorrow. I need to pack still. It's only overnight. I'm going to pack the kids' food. Like, I'm a cheapskate. I'm going to spend $20 for them to get two kids' meals at this place and not eat it. Like, they'll just eat the french fries. They're... They are pretty picky, I guess. They eat so, so, so healthy, but it has to be very specific. Like it has to be the corn dogs they're used to or the chicken nuggets they're used to. If it cannot be any other brand, French fries they'll eat anywhere, um, but everything else is very specific. So I'm gonna cut up a bunch of carrots and peppers. Um, I don't know what other veggies we could really keep in the fridge like that, that they would eat. Apples and bananas will bring and just let them eat that because they're gonna eat a lot of junk food still. So I don't wanna pay a bunch of money on food that they're not gonna eat. We'll probably get Taco Bell because that's one of the only places I can eat out at as a gluten-free vegetarian. They actually have some pretty decent options. Um, anyways, I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you for hanging out with me every week. I really appreciate it. I know I have been remiss in responding to comments and I feel very badly about that. I will try to catch up with them today. Um, it's just, I'm always so busy. That's my only excuse. And I try not to be on my phone around my kids. So I don't mind cross-stitching downstairs around them, but I don't like to just be on my phone constantly. I just feel like it's not setting a good example and we don't let them have a lot of screen time. So it wouldn't be fair for me to sit there and be on my phone if they're not allowed to be, like my son really likes his Kindle. I'd be like, no, you can't get on your Kindle, but I'm gonna sit here on my phone for 20 minutes. So I try not to be on my phone around them too much. Um, doesn't always work, but I try. So. I just keep looking at it. It's so cute. It's so fun. I love it. It looks like it's snowing. Oh, that would be a cute confetti idea. It's a little snow. Uh, okay. Anyways, I'm going to go start packing, start getting ready for our trip. Thank you guys for watching the video today. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I will probably be posting some pictures of our trip there later today. Um, it's Erica D. House. Uh, the link or the names below so you can go look at it on Instagram if you want. I post every day there, lots of my stories, not in my necessarily pictures, but what we're doing for the day and my kids are some crafts and homeschool stuff and snakes on our walk and you know, whatever random thing I think is awesome for the day. All my cross stitching progress, I'll post there um, typically at least once a day in the stories what I've been working on. So if we're not friends on Instagram yet, um, that would be fun if you wanted to follow me over there. So I'm gonna go so we can pack and I will see you guys next week.